I wanted to start off this adventure part of the series with a place that has always captivated me, Colorado. Hey guys, it's Lisa with Creative Adventures here in Telluride. We're in the downtown historic village of Telluride. I'm about to do some plain air painting of the mountains in the downtown area. It's literally a perfect day outside. It's gonna be like 40 degrees, the sun is out, so I can't wait to start painting and walk you guys through it. My biggest goal for this part of the series is to teach you how to think like an artist. Play and curiosity and some ambiguity are the foundation to every painting. I'm working with the pro panels today. Um, they're actually made for plein air painting. This is the studio gray color and it's nice that it already has kind of that tone to it so you don't actually have to build up as much paint. Um, so I'm going to be working in acrylics today using the Extra Fine Acrylics by Sharpen. Really excited about that. So I'm grabbing some titanium white to start off with. I'll be using some Azure Blue from the Impressionist set and Alexander Blue that I'm going to be using for the sky tone. And I'll do my wash of the town in some burnt sienna, as well as some yellow ochre to give a nice range. So I'm just going to start off with a little bit of a, a light wash here. Yeah, so when starting a painting, I like to just kind of throw some paint on right away and not really overthink it, but just kind of play with the paint and um, really work it, work it as I go. If you're painting in plain air for the first time or even the fifth or tenth time, I just want to encourage you that it's okay to make mistakes. Failure is typically actually our best teacher and that's part of the process, right? We need to be able to play, to, to experiment with our different styles. Part of learning that is playing around with the textures, the paints. Kind of making a map of where the roads will end up being. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start to kind of sketch out where I think the buildings are going to be and I really do treat the wash like a sketch where I'm just really looking at shapes right now and sometimes even squinting and looking at the subject helps block out where those bigger shapes are and um, allows me to not focus too much on details but really get that get that sketch laid down first so that I can go in later and build on top of that. So again, now I'm doing the same thing with the mountains. I'm just kind of looking at the shapes of the mountains and the relationship to the sky and buildings and just quickly laying down some paint and playing with values a little bit. So something I love about painting in plain air is um, well, not only being outside and being in nature, but also, I mean, right now we're literally, I'm in the middle of the street, and so there's people walking by, there's the energy of the town, um, and it's just, that actually invigorates me a bit, and um, it helps me capture more of that personality of the place that I'm even painting. And I always, too, like to use a bigger brush, even though um, there's a lot of details going on. It's nice to start big and just really have that, um, that character of the brush strokes and not really pay attention too much to the details in the beginning, but really just hone in on the shapes of the mountains. And um, using a big brush forces you <laughs> to not think about the details too much and really really worry about only the bigger picture. I'm just finishing 
kind of putting in the sky in, and skies are typically lighter at the bottom of the um, horizon, and the, as you go up, the sky turns into a darker blue, so I'm kind of trying to capture that gradient. And I'm painting over the mountains a little bit because I'll put those in front, um, but I wanted to lay the sky down first. So now with the mountains, I'm about to do a little bit of um, palette knife painting to get those nice sharp edges. With palette knife painting, you want to load your palette knife with a roll of paint and then carefully press down on your canvas using the knife edges and scrape the paint down. So you really want a good chunk of paint on your knife to work with. So sometimes um, I actually use my phone as a quick perspective um, tool. And so I'll just take a picture of exactly what I'm trying to paint and um, kind of use that to make sure everything is in perspective. Um, it's an awesome tool actually. So now I'm going in and fixing some parts of the wash that were off on the perspective, like bringing up that building on the left and also changing some of the shapes in the mountains. I thought it was time to break off the jacket, put on the artist hat, and enjoy the weather. Another thing that I love about plain air painting is when people come up and talk to me. Um, I actually love hearing about where they're from and what they've been doing on their vacation and also talking with them about art a little bit and my story. So I'm still working on just adding some colors and layers to the buildings. And once we're done with that, we'll get working on the sidewalks and the mountains and keep on adding more details each round. Working in layers is really what makes the painting pop. So it's fun to start to add in these details now that we're going through on the second layer because each stroke really brings the painting to life. So now I'm being more intentional with colors and really studying what's in front of me with a more careful eye for this second pass through. Whereas the first layer or the wash was more of a foundational layer where I was just trying to get things in perspective. But now I'm building on top of that with more detail. And then my third layer will be even more detailed and careful. So I'm still saving the more minute details for last, but the second pass through is really about elevating the wash into a more distinguishable painting that is getting closer to what that final painting is going to look like. All right, so now I'm gonna go through and do the final pass-through layer. Um, I could spend <laughs> days working on this and doing lots and lots of more layers, but I'm just gonna do one more to kind of top it off and add in some more extra detail. But I've been out here for maybe about two hours now. Um, it's a beautiful day and I'm just really enjoying this. Now this really is my favorite part of the painting process because you're finally starting to see your vision come through. Um, and this is where I paint with the most control and smallest strokes. And even though I'm not putting as much paint on the canvas, this is actually 
where each stroke is really important in making that painting come to life and really adding the, the 3D dimension to it, making sure all the colors are correct, adding in highlights, textures. So yeah, this is, this is by far my favorite part of a painting. All right, so I am finishing up the last touches here. And like I said earlier, I literally could spend another two, three hours here and just keep on refining, keep on making it better. But yeah, I think we're getting to a pretty good point here for stopping. So I'm going to sign my initials and call it a successful day. So here is the final painting, which I think came out pretty good with the perspective and colors. The lighting changed a bit over time, but that's alright, that's part of working outside. So overall, I'm really happy with how things turned out. I want to thank Visit Colorado for bringing us out here and just being able to experience Colorado and a bunch of different activities. From ice climbing for the first time in Uray, and then going snowmobiling in Breckenridge to skiing at Vail and Telluride. It's just been an incredible trip. So hit subscribe if you haven't already and follow along for more tutorials. Thank you.